Then we have change at the top of Google, uh, the parent company, Alphabet. Larry Page, Sergey Brin, they've stepped down. Sundar Pichai is now the CEO of that company. And the stock is up. David Barnson joins us. Have you any input on why they moved and why they moved down now? Um, there, I have no information as to why they've moved now, but I do have a lot of information that they have not been that involved in senior leadership for quite some time. They've brought in quite a significant senior team. My old CFO at Morgan Stanley has been the CFO at Google now for some time. Mm. They have a, a real, at, they, yeah. and Ruth is a very capable senior executive. They have a good leadership team. These are technologist guys. I think that, that, that they're, it's fun for them. Uh, they're ready to move to something different. Let's get back to the market. Dow component Johnson Johnson says it uh, tests show its baby powder is safe and that the FDA was stoking fear. What do you make of this, Dave? Really sad for the trial lawyers today. <laughs> it's a real disappointment for the ambulance chasers of our society. J&J yes. &J is one of the most high-quality companies yes. in our country. They have done ample testing yes. here, as Asha said, and I'll tell you, um, you can tell what the company fears about their own risk by what reserves they put away. J&J &J has through the whole time, even in this opioid mm -hmm. case, put very few reserves aside. They believe they're going to be victorious, yeah. not just in court of public opinion and with consumers, but legally. I really hope they are. Me too. I, I, just, I just hate to see trial lawyers taking down a wonderful company like Johnson & Johnson. Amen. I just yeah. don't like to see that. GoPro, you know, I'll move on. <laughs> GoPro, that stock uh, on the upside, the CEO says, we crushed it in early holiday sales. <laughs> yeah, got any more? 10 uh, percent up. All right, I'll Go tell ahead. you, I, I, I know why uh, Bonson is uh, laughing uh -huh. right now. So basically, <laughs> we heard from uh, Nick Woodman, and he says that we enjoyed record sales and the kickoff to the holiday shopping period, and that's why this uh, stock is up some close to 10 percent uh, trading today. But this stock actually went public, IPO at $24. Well, now it's it, trading at $4. But it's traded at 88 That's right. So they crushed, they crushed it. And they got crushed. And they crushed. went from 88 to 4 Wow. Well, I didn't know that. They, they, at one oh. time, they were at $88 which, a share. Which is around where he was selling most of his stock. That's right. Oh, I didn't know that either. Oh, I can go on all day on this. Oh, uh, yes. you, you, yeah, no that's right. you were smiling. He was a huge <laughs> seller. He was a huge seller, hundreds of millions in the 70s. But the stock was not only in the 70s, it stayed up there. I think it had an all time high in the 80s. But now yeah, sitting here at four. So that's why you laugh when you hear stocks up 10% and they crushed it, and yet it's down 95%. Let's get to our expert on dividends. That would be ah. Mr. David Barnson. Let's start with the stocks you like. I see Simon Property Group there. You like that stock? Oh, I love it. You know, you have a year like this where S&P's up 25%. We have a whole lot of stocks in our portfolio that have performed extremely well. Some that the valuations now look a little stretched. You have to look to where there's been weakness, and yet the story itself is still intact. Simon Property is not up big on the year. They're offering an over 5% dividend yield all paid from net operating income. This is a legitimate mm. cash flow, mm. and yet they have the strongest balance sheet of any publicly traded REIT. They are in the high-quality mall space. They're not a JCPenney and Sears uh, owner. They own high-quality assets, and they have been through reinvention before. You look mm. at a lot of those retailers that went away in the 90s. Simon Property's been through this. 97% uh, occupancy. More occupancy now than they had a year ago. So oh, if I buy it? that, I get 5% dividend. Over for 5 five. Over wow. five, and you're yeah. pretty much solid on that one. It's grown every year for 10 and years. And there is the possibility of a capital gain as well. Absolutely. Possibility, a, a very significant possibility of price appreciation. We think fair value is much closer to $200 a share. Mm. Wow. Ouch. <laughs> All right. All right. No, no ouch involved. I like it. Right. Next one is uh, MetLife. Uh, yeah, MetLife is another one. It's up on the year, and in particular, I think it was up 8% in uh, November alone, but it's still not significantly up over the last few years of this bull market extension, and that's with interest mm. rates having been significantly low. Insurers want net interest margin. They yep. like the higher rates. So MetLife has performed so well in a difficult environment. Our view is they have even more expansion opportunity. Remember, they spun off their annuity but unit. What do I get now? If I, wow. What dividend yield? 3.65%, and they've grown it about 7% per year. But I get 3.6% if I buy MetLife. Day one, 3.65, and again, good price appreciation in front of it. <laughs> Mr. Bonson, that was an excellent performance today. Two well, fine stocks you, with nice dividend yields. Thanks for joining us. Good okay. to be with you.